Hi everybody, welcome back. Glad you could tune in again. Today we're going to start something quite different. I want to share with you some things that I've been enjoying from this book called Solomon Says by Mark Horn. The subtitle is Directives for Young Men, but it's not just for young men. It's for men and women, as Mark himself says in chapter one. This book is for anybody who wants to grow in maturity in Christ. I was so taken with this book. I'd read the preface, introduction and the first chapter this afternoon and I immediately went back on Amazon and ordered four more copies for Nicole and Ben and Becky and Abby. We're going to read it together. They don't know that yet, but we're going to. I want to encourage you to consider doing the same thing. Grab a copy and let's work through it together. It's a fantastic book. Let me give you some things that I thought were really fantastic from the preface and the introduction just as we kick off. The preface begins with a great illustration of what it means to grow up as a Christian uh, in maturity in Christ and also as a, a person from uh, childhood to adulthood. Mark likens the process to learning to drive a car. Of course, when you learn to drive a car, you acquire a huge amount of new freedom. You can suddenly go new places. You can go faster. You can take stuff with you. You can, you can't, you're not just waiting for somebody to take you across town. You can drive across town. You can drive across the state. You can go and visit somebody. All these new freedoms that it brings. But, of course, driving a car means that you have immense new responsibilities. If you bump into somebody when you're walking down the sidewalk because you're being a bit careless, you might injure them. If you bump into somebody when you're driving a car because you're being a bit careless, you'll probably kill them. It's really important when you're growing up to realise that the new freedoms that you have come with huge responsibilities. And especially, of course, as Mark is saying, yes, particularly directed at young people, the freedoms that you acquire gradually as you're growing up bring with them tremendous responsibilities because you have an immense capacity to do harm. Now that harm comes about in our lives when we fail to discipline ourselves appropriately, when we let our desires or our impulses take control of our lives. And so as Mark says, this is in the preface, uh, page eight, controlling one's impulses takes on new importance because of the potential consequences. Just as somebody who's learned to drive a car must now control his or her impulses to make sure he doesn't drive into something or somebody. So all of us, as we're growing in maturity in Christ, and particularly young people as they're growing towards adulthood, must now learn to control their impulses. And the aim of this book is to help us get better at driving our way through life, piloting yourself through life, as Mark says. So that's the preface. The introduction now then summarises what the book of Proverbs contributes to this question. And the book of Proverbs is really where a lot of this discussion is focused in this book. Here's a quote. Proverbs is written to young men, brackets, and everyone else. You see, it's not just young men, but perhaps particularly them, to encourage and instruct them to become kings and not to remain slaves. Now, I think that's a very striking thought, and Mark emphasises this again and again, that a young person is a slave. A child is a slave. How is that so? Well, obviously, a child is a slave in the uh, sense that a child obeys the command of their parents when they're young. That means it's not bad for a young person to be a slave in the sense that you just follow the instructions of your mum and dad. In fact, the idea of slavery is used in Galatians 4 to describe um, Israel's relationship to God and their life in the world. But they're not slaves anymore. And a young person who's growing up is not a slave anymore. They have received the freedom of the glory of the sons of God. They've grown to maturity in Christ, just as a young person should have grown to maturity as an adult. Now, here's where the problem sets in, because all too often it's easy for young people to imagine that adult freedom means simply liberation from all restrictions. Here's a quote. A young child often sees adults as possessing an immense amount of freedom. They go to bed when they want, they drink alcohol when they want, they decide when to eat ice cream and how much, and they can get up as late as they like, and they can watch as many videos as they like. So, quote, a child's impression of adult freedom is something like being a child without adult supervision. And of course, for many people as they grow up, that's exactly what it's like. Many people are actually adult bodies, but childlike minds, and don't discipline themselves to behave like adults. And that's not the kind of maturity which Mark 
following the book of Proverbs, is wanting to call us to. Rather, he's saying, actually, that's a form of slavery. To be an adult like that is just a new form of slavery, because instead of being enslaved, so to speak, to your parents, where you've got to do what they tell you to do, now you're simply enslaved to your desires. So you follow your desires, foolish and immature, wherever they may lead you. You're not free, actually, to live in the world because you're enslaved to whatever you're following. And if that's your foolish desires, then that's what you're a slave to. So here's the key to the book, really. The book of Proverbs is the solution to this because the book of Proverbs tells us how we may take control of our desires so that instead of being slaves to our desires, we are the masters of them. We are kings of them. And that's where he goes in chapter one, which is what we'll look at in the next video, picking up on that theme of how important it is that we should rule over our desires. We should control ourselves so that we're able to live a fruitful and disciplined and godly and mature life. Chapter one is even better than the introduction. I encourage you, grab a copy of this book, Solomon Says by Mark Horn. Let's read it together and I'll see you in a couple of days time. Bye for now.